I was asked to give some chizuk about the three, the three tragedies, national tragedies that we are dealing with. COVID-19, which is still a threat, the Miron tragedy, Lagba Omer, and the war, the Hamas, who've killed people. We're still in very great fear of, of the dangers that lurk in the Holy Land. I would like to focus my remarks on the Parsha Sashavua, because you see, as we have these three tragedies, the Ramban explains to us that so too in Parsha Sashavua, there were no less than three Puranios, three consecutive Puranios, and he, he labels them one after the other. Those who wish to look it up can see it at the very end of the Perik Yud and the beginning of Perik Yud Aleph of Sefer by Midbar. The first, as the Ramban explains, is Vayisu Mehar Hashem. They inappropriately traveled with a wrong attitude from Har Sinai, number one. Number two, they complained, Kimis Onanim. And number three, his Avu Tava, they were involved in lustful activities. Let us understand the words of the Ramban are quite powerful. You know that between them, between number one and number two, comes the famous parsha of Ahib and Sohoron, Vayoma Moshe, Kuma Hashem, Vyafutso, Evecha, Vyanusu, Mesanecha, Miponecha. It's a very important pasuk, and it's important. The Ramban says there were three Peronios, and that this parsha was moved here, Shalo Yu, Sholosh, Peronios, Smuchos, Ulazu. Three times as a chazaka of Peronus. Who knows if we'd ever get out of it? But Baruch Hashem, this parsha was moved here to separate Peronus one from two and three, and only three makes a chazaka, and therefore we were saved. Why is it? What's the duality over here? So Rashi says. Those who are gathered will be spread out. And those who are pursuing us will run away. And who are Misanecha? Says Rashi. Those are those who hate Am Yisrael. Why? Whoever hates Yisrael hates Hashem. Has he no? Pasuk and Tillim. The same expression, Misanecha, as you have over here. Who are they? Al Amcha Yarimu Sod. Tilim Perik Pe Gimel Pasa Gimel and Dalit. If they're attacking Am Yisrael, they're really attacking the Rabbana Shalom. That's what it boils down to, as it says in Tilim, and as, as Rashi explains here in Parashas Baha Al I'd like to dwell for a moment on the duality. Why your Futsu, which means they'll spread out, and you so they run away. And why oivecha your enemies and misane echa? I'd like to focus on the word misane echa. It should have said sone echa. Sone Yisrael. We all talk. What does misane mean? It's lush and hifil. It's not enough that he hates Am Yisrael, he hates Hashem. He gets others to do exactly the same thing. That's a worse threat. We see in today's world that we have, not only do we have sone, we have misanim. The people are trying to get the rest of the world against us. And they don't necessarily be the, the Hamas and Aza. They could be in Washington, D.C. They could be many different places. They're trying to get the, the world to be against Am Yisrael. We see it, unfortunately, even some members of Kalah Yisrael themselves, unfortunately, have joined that bandwagon. I wrote about it briefly in the Torah web piece, which some of you may have seen, which is attached to this Zoom invitation. And therefore, I believe it's as follows. If someone is just an Oyev, he hates us himself. It's enough. You have food too. You scatter them. If, you, if, if they're scattered around, they're not going to harm us too much. But if he's a misane, he's not only he hates us, he gets others to hate us. Then it's not enough to scatter because especially in today's world, you can sit in your house and take your internet and spew hatred throughout the globe. It's not enough that they be scattered. You have to be, they have to run away. They have to be defeated. So we can spread out those who hate us, but those who are spewing hate, who are trying to 
misanim, like a chote umachti, they have to be routed. That's why it says, yonusu misanecha miponecha, suggestion that I wanted to say, it's just a pshat in these psukim. And how do we do it? Only one way. Kuma, in soa haron, kuma Hashem. Only the Rabboni Shalom with the Oron, which is the Koach of Torah, can achieve these victories. We cannot do it on our own. We have to have a Siyad of the can only come through Torah. Chazal tell us, HaKol Kol Yaakov Adai Midei Esau, Kol Zmach the Kol Yaakov, when the voice of Yaakov is heard, when davening and learning, Ein Yidei Esau Sholtos, the hands of Esau, and as I explained, Yishmael is a branch of Esau, as Sadjigo and the Barbanel both say, so the, the way to defeat them in the upper worlds is with the Kol Yaakov, is with Torah and Tefillah. That's our focus. We have to be involved in, in, in focusing on our Torah and our Tefillah to do our share, each and every one of us, to do... That's our share in this battle. Our share in the battle against the enemy in Gaza and throughout the world where they're trying to hate, hurt us and hate us and demean us and, and, and call us all kinds of names, as we know. I don't want to even repeat those names that we're being called right now. Torah and tefillah. That's our, our primary response. I'm not here against to be the, the, the activists, the shtadlon, and we'll have to work the halls of Congress and, and deal with the politicians. That's, it's, it's, an, it's an avoida, I'm not saying no. But for those who are not involved in that, Torah and tefillah. That's how we have to do, what we have to do in order to defeat this enemy. Now, I believe... If there are three Puranis in a row, A, B, and C, the, this Parsha could have been put between A and B or between B and C. That shouldn't have three in a row. No, it's put between A and B. And why is it put between A and B? I believe that the answer is the, we have to analyze what the three Puranios are in order to understand uh, why it's here. And of course, as they had three perennials, we have three perennials, and I will try to uh, connect them as best as possible. What do you mean? The Gemara says, Mr. After Shabbos, of Kuf Tezvov, Omid Beis, that I see the parasha Zule Oker, these 85 letters in this little parasha, will the Asa Lavo, you put back where they belong. Where they belong? They belong, the two nuns, Nun Afuchas. It belongs 50 parashas earlier in Bar Midbar, Perik Beis, Pasuk Yuzayim. That's where the Encampment of Klai Yisrael moves. Two encampments, that you know, the first two, Degel Mach Nehuda, Degel Mach Nefraim, they're the first two who, who move. And then there's a, a singular Pasuk, just one little Pasuk, which tells us what happened after that. After, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, Mach Nehuda and Mach Nehuven, the first two. V'nosa ha'ol mo'ed Mach Nehuven besoch ha'mach can you so? This is where this possibly belongs. But so are Rabbi Moshe. Then comes the Ephraim. Then comes Don. So between the first two and the last two, that's where it belongs. Says the Gemara, Le Osid, Asida, this parasha, Le Oker, Vilikose, Bimkoma. It's going to be moved. We can't understand what this means in the higher world. In the Torah, Kadosh, in the future, it's going to be moved, these, these two psukim. From Bahalos to Bamid, but where it really belongs. And Rashi there explains in Mesech the Shabbos, Kuv Tes Vov Omid Beis, what's Lossid? Kishe Kol Peronios Betalin. Here it's put in the half stick between Peronos to Peronos. But the Osid love are all Peronos will be Boto. And then it says in Born Rashi, Lo Yidegul the Peronios, the Yetzahara Boto. The Yetzahara will be Boto. There'll be no need to put these two psukim shalobim komam. They'll go back to their natural place, which is back in Sparshas by Midbar, not in Baloscha. Amazing. And until then, and until then, we have the Yetzirah. It's not a bottle. Chazal tells us in Kiddushin, Barasi Yetzirah, U Barasi lo Torah Tavlin. The Torah is the way we fight the Yetzirah in this world. The next world, they'll disappear the Yetzirah. But in this world, it's still there. We have to fight it, and we can only fight it with Torah. That's exactly why Kuma bin Soa Aron. Bin Soa Aron means with the Torah, when the Torah leads us in our travels throughout the world. And this is how we overcome the Peronius. We will be able to overcome the Yvecha and the Misanecha only through Torah. And as 
I saw when Rabbi Rabbi Simchazil brought his parish on the Ramban that the Torah determines the Metzius. It's stakel baraisa bar alma. The fact that the, these two psukim are found here now, as the Ramban explains, to prevent the cheskas peronius. So history has been determined by where Hakadosh Baruch Hu placed these two psukim here, and now where they belong in Parshas Midbar. And when the world changes, the Minoma Yetzahara, the Rabbanu Shem Kavayocha, we don't know how, we'll take these two psukim and put them back. Just Parshas by Midbar. It's an incredible idea. Incredible idea. Now, what exactly was this first Parodius? And how was the Torah an antidote to it? So the Ramban explains, based on Chazal, and I quote, Nosu mehar Hashem v'simcha kitino kaboreach mi beis ha-sefer. They ran away from Sinai. They ran away. Boreach. They didn't just go away. They ran away. They, 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 they couldn't wait to run away. Besimcha. As a Tinoch. You haven't been in a playground when the recess bell rings. Everyone as a kid, they're running out of class and they're having a good time from being cramped into their desks. Now they're going to go play ball and have fun, run around outside in the yard. That's what it means. Tinoch, Aboreach, Shemesh, is dismissal time. The kids are running. The kids are running. That's how we left Har Sinai. What a tragedy. We, sh- we had to leave, but we, Hashem told us to leave. We should have left what we call Bikoshi. Bikoshi. And as Rabbi Reuter elaborates over there, they lacked their appreciation for the place where they found themselves, which was Har Sinai. Because they lacked the appreciation for that place. They left in a hurry with joy. They had to leave. I should have told them to leave. They should have left slowly with pain. You have to properly appreciate the base of Knesset and the base of Medrash, which are the continuation of our Sinai. And if you have to leave, you have to leave with pain, with great pain. The COVID-19 pandemic forced us to leave our shuls and our yeshivas that were closed shut last year. No choice. Even after the possibility to open, there were many who were afraid to come back for good reason. They preferred outdoor minyanim for good reason. It was considered to be much safer by the CDC which is the body of the government that we're required to follow. And even now, there are those who don't want to come back to shul. They want to be outside because it's safer. And we, we bless everyone who tries to be safe. Very important idea in, 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 in halacha, in Torah, to try to be safe. However, unfortunately, we've seen this phenomenon. There were the individuals who were very happy not to be in shul. Oh, they love it. Why must I listen to the rabbi's speech? More fundamentally, why must I be the rabbi under the rabbi's thumb? Or even the president or board of the trustees' thumb? I want to have my backyard minion. I'm the boss. No one can tell me what to do. I can do whatever I want. I'll start when I want, and I'll end when I want, and I'll say what I want, omit what I want. I will be as safe as I want to be and not any safer than that. I'm not going to be bound by the CDC or by the doctors or the rabbis. Nobody. The land of the free and the home of the brave. Do whatever I want in my backyard. And we've seen this phenomenon. This phenomenon is a tinok sheboreach mi beis ha-sefer. We've seen it. I believe, we may not, not up to it yet, but when this danger of COVID passes sufficiently, we must regroup. We must come back to our shuls and to our yeshivas with renewed strength. We have to be, be aware of what I call the Humpty Dumpty syndrome. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. There were too many uh, individuals who were very happy not to be in shul. And they would attempt to keep their backyard minyanim going all the time. Now, I'm familiar with the phenomenon of these minyanim, which have existed for many years in many communities, primarily, primarily for convenience. 
you know, the Friday night minion is closer, the, the Mincha Ma'am Shabbat afternoon is closer. But until COVID struck, we didn't find backyard minyanim or these kind of minyanim too frequently for Shabbos morning. Shabbos morning was always the time when everybody got together. All right, there may have been different minyanim in the same shul, Ashkama, and this and that, but it was at least a, a getting together. I believe it's arguable that this getting together is a Doraisa mandate. We are required to do so by the laws of the Torah. Where do I get it from? Not a backyard. A backyard if you have no choice, COVID. But once the danger passes, you're required by the Torah HaKadosh itself to come to Shul on Shabbos Yantav. At least Shabbos Yantav in the morning. Where do I get it from? It's from Ramban. The Ramban in Vayikra, Perik Chav Gibel, Postuk Beis, comments on the term Mikroi Kodesh. Mikroi Kodesh is found twice. It's found initially um, that means Shabbos is included in Mikroi Kodesh. And it's repeated. The Ramban writes on the first passage, still talking about Shabbos. There's a chiv in the Torah to come together on Shabbos, not in the backyard, in the Beis HaKnesses, in the Shul, and to daven together and to sing together and to say hello together and to be together. And together means in a Mokam Torah, which is our version of Mikdash Ma'at. It's a Mikdash Ma'at. We have his man as Chazal tells him a Sechta Megillah. And what's the Mikdash? A continuation to Ramban writes at the beginning of Truma of Har Sinai. So we shouldn't be running away from our Har Sinai and we shouldn't be running away from our Mikdash Ma'at, our shoes. We have to come back and we have to come back in force. Again, every Rav in his own community has to know how to do it and when to do it, depends upon the particulars of the community depends upon the guidelines of the CDC and responsible medical individuals who have been empowered by the Rav and the, and the leadership of the shul. Everybody can find a doctor to say, it's, you're too strict, you're too lenient. It doesn't work that way. There has to be one unified approach to every single shul. Not all shuls have to be the same. But within the shul, there has to be a unified uh, approach and it's very important. Unfortunately, here's an irony. I made a quick allusion to it in that same Torah web piece, that now that the CDC relaxes rules and says if everyone is vaccinated, so you don't need any more masks or distance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, now comes the problem. What about those who refuse to vaccinate? Till now, we didn't have that problem. Everybody was treated the same way till the CDC didn't, didn't, wasn't uh, recognizing vaccination as being sufficiently safe. So everybody had a mask and everybody had a distance. Now that they changed the rules, so the one or two who refuse to vaccinate, they have to give them some different treatment. At least in my shul, we allow them to come. We just ask them to be in a separate section, masked and distance. Exactly what the CDC says. Uh, complaints, why I'm being discriminated against. I've learned you cannot argue with these people. They, they have their own, their mind is made up to convince them that vaccination is the best way to go, I think you're wasting your breath. But unfortunately, they don't always respond properly to the, to the reality that every shul has to have its rules and the CDC has rules. That's unfortunately it's caused certain friction. And perhaps even worse than that, there were those who refused to obey. I'm not, gonna, I'm not vaccinated. I'm not gonna mask. I'm not gonna distance. Because my science is better than yours. I have antibodies. Well. Very nice. Go argue with the CDC. Go argue with the with the doctors in the shul and the rabbi who follows those doctors. Not right. There has to be a unified policy in every shul, whatever it happens to be. Again, unfortunately, the, the sudden the machlokas can creep in anywhere. But the bottom line is we have to go back to shul. It's very, very important. This is something which I want to talk about at greater length at a different time. Let's go back to Peronius number two. Peronius number two is Miss Onanin. What's Miss Onan? Complaints. Complaints. What's complaint? This is this Perigud Aleph, Pasuk Aleph. What does it mean? My is Onan, says Rashi. My is Onan, Odom Chai. That's what the, the word means. A, a complaint. A complaint. Uh, people complain of all kinds of things. Right? For what reason? For what reason? So, again, the Ramban. Tells us 
Mayis on an Adam Chai Gever Al Chatov, Loshen Koev will mitzar al Atzmo. Oi, I'm in pain. I've I'm, 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 uh, I, I, I feel I bemoan my fate, if you will, bemoan by fate. Koavim will mitzar it. What were they? What, what, what was so terrible? I don't know, but the pasuk says Hashem got angry, right? Ra bene beozne Hashem, and he got meicher apo, and it was an esh. It was terrible. Hashem expressed his anger. What was the problem? Ramban explained what the problem was. What was the problem? They should have gone out in their trip from Marsinai with tremendous simcha. What an irony. What an irony. To leave Harsinai, as Ramban said, they did it for simcha. Like, once they left and now they're on the road and they should be for simcha, they had so many good things. No. Then they became complainers, bemoaning their own fate. An, an irony. And what was their problem? What was their problem? What was their complaint? So Rashi explains what the complaint was. Oilona, woe unto us. Oh, it's been such a schlep to run around what's called the derech shlosh yomim. A way of three days. I'm not exactly sure how to reconcile this, but Rashi says a bit earlier in Pasuk Lam and Gimel and Perek Yud, Derech Shloshes Yomim, the same expression Shlosh Yomim, but they did it in one day. Whatever trials and tribulations of this one slash three days of traveling, it was there for their betterment to get into Territ Yisrael more quickly, and that's what would have happened. Had they not made this one mistake, we'd have gone into Eretz Yisrael immediately. My Rebbe Rav Salavechik Zatzal has a beautiful shir in Pashas Baloso. We dramatize this. They were almost there. You could almost feel the coming into Eretz Yisrael and had they come in at that stage, perhaps it would never have been a Nigolas afterwards. It would have been an unbelievable world we would live in. The last minute they blew it. The last minute they blew it with the Masonan image, that's the other Chatam, which we don't have time to go into right now. But therefore, this is what happened. This is what happened. Now, this is a lesson for all of us for all times. Not to complain on our journey through life. Everybody has something which doesn't go wrong, which doesn't go right. Something is going to go wrong somewhere. It's an inevitable part of life. But we should be besimcha and the Ramban is alluding to the Pasuk, as he said, if you, the words of the Ramban echo the Pasuk in Sefer Devarim, where he writes this follows one more time, let's read the words. V'simcha v'tuv levav meirov kol. That's a Pasuk in the Tochacha. Devarim chav ches mem zayin. Tachas hashlovavata will be terrible punishment. You think it's easy to achieve this avoda? No. The Ramban says it's not easy, but we have to be up to it. The last Ramban Hichas Lulav. It's a, it's an important service, and it's a critical service, and it's a difficult service. And he quotes the postage of Tachas. Tachas. And someone whose meg is dato, cholikova liatzmo, is a chote vishote, and a mashvel atzmo is oven me'ava, doven melech yisrael, etc., etc., What's the connection? The answer is, the person's proper anova, he's not going to complain about what he's missing. He'll be very thankful for what he has. But a person who's a Balgaiva, who thinks very highly of himself, is called Megis Data, then he's going to complain. I don't have all that I deserve. I'm so great. I am I. I'm not getting all that I need. So he's going to start complaining. You know, the word may roll of coal, it's literally an abundance of good. I'd like to translate it, and I've seen this, the, even the, uh, the experts in, 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 in the Hebrew Bible agree with me, that the word rove is found sometimes in Tanakh in its, in, its, in its rabbinic meaning. You follow the rove, the majority. May rove kol means a majority of good. 
there's going to be a minority of not so good. It's inevitable in life. But you have to serve Hashem b'simcha, but to blame a merov chol for the majority of good that you have. Don't complain about the minority. Don't complain about the minority. There's always going to be a minority somewhere or other. She's so, so careful about this. This is Puranius number two, to avoid complaining. And he quotes the passage by his own and other Machai. A person's alive, he shouldn't be complaining. We just passed through the COVID crisis. We're alive. Everyone on the Zoom is alive. Unfortunately, as we know, how many people are. Uh, how many people did, died in the United States of America and throughout the world? Millions upon millions. And a person who's not only alive, but is blessed by Hashem, that his family is alive. He hasn't taken a, a, a hit in his, in his own family of people who have died. And many people lost, lost very close family members. Can't speak to everyone on the Zoom. I don't know who's on the Zoom. But those of us who didn't lose family members should be even more grateful. And what's our responsibility? to strengthen those who have suffered losses, losses from COVID, losses in Miron, losses from Hamas and the war in Israel. Whoever survives has to be the Simcha. And what's Simcha? Another Rambam. What's the greatest Simcha? We read the Rambam at the very end of Hilchus Lulav, the last one. Next to the last one in Hilchus Megillah. Tells you what a Simcha really is. The Rambam writes as follows. He writes, it's better to have matonas of yonim as opposed to sudas purim and shalach manas. She'ain sham simcha gedola mefuara. There's no greater and more splendid joy. Elisameach leiv aniim v'yisomim v'yavonas v'gerim. To gladden the hearts of the poor and the and the orphan and the widow and the stranger. She mesameach leiv amlolim ha'ilu doma l'shchina. You compare to Hashem as it says. Hashem is the one who revives the spirit of the lowly. He revives the, the heart of the crushed. We read on Yom Kippur. What do we see from here? You want to really be happy? Don't involve yourself in meat and wine. That's limited. That's limited. Your, your stomach has a limit. But if you are helping others, your doma the shechina. What does that mean? Hashem is the ultimate native, and our neshama, every every neshama is is a chelik alokami malach, as I'll say, and and we learned in school that the smallest fraction of infinity is infinity. Ha nefesh lo timale says in Kohelas. There's unlimited joy to be experienced if we'll only focus on helping others, on living for others. That's what the Rambam teaches us. That's what he teaches us. That's what, it's our responsibility to worry about others, to try to make them happy, to, to join in their, in their pain, to daven for them. In our shul every Shabbos, we daven for the Yosh Eretz Yisrael, Asher Sakona Gedolim Rachefes Aleim Be'eretz HaKodesh. This tremendous Sakona. We say it every single week, because the war is never ending. But in the last few weeks, of course we said it besides some Tillim. And we introduce into that, the Hiratsam we say every week, Chayalenu. Our soldiers. There's nothing wrong with the Mishaberch for Chayal Eitzav. You leave out the main people. You leave out the citizenry. In the last round, the people who passed away, well, except for one, we're all, all citizens. Not enough to pray for the soldiers. We should, but we have to pray for every every single person in Eretz Israel, all of whom are in danger. And what are we complaining about? What was this whole complaint? The Ramban tells us what the complaint was about. Tells us what they're complaining about. Chisaron v'hano sehem. There was a little bit of a, a lack of their pleasures, of their pleasures. Was it a significant lack? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> the Sfarno says right over here on the same pasuk. Lo hoisa etzlam shemsiba ruuya lezeshi yisonenu. There was nothing which warranted this complaint. Yes, they were missing a little, they're missing a little of that. They had the man. They had what to eat. They had no right to complain. And remember, the, the Torah Haderach, which they suffered, was all for their benefit, to get them into Eretz Yisrael more quickly. So on our derech in life, on our road through life, on our path through life, there are going to always be difficulties. Absolutely. We're not denying it. But Mirov Kol, don't complain. You have a majority of good things. Focus on the 
the ninety percent of the glass that's empty, not the ten that's full, not the ten percent that's empty. I think for most of us, it's more than a half a glass full. Just for how you look at it. Please don't focus on what's missing, but focus on what you have. And the third and final Peronius is Abu Tava. They lusted and lusted lust. The Pasuk goes on in, in Pasuk Dalit. By a shuvayifku. They went, they went back to cry. And the Rabban explains the fact that it says by a shuvayifku, the next one is indicates that the two Peronius two and three are in fact related. That's perhaps why the Hefzik was between one and two and not between two and three, because two and three are really significantly related. It says, As I said before, they were lacking in some of their uh, creature comforts. They didn't take the Muslim from the Aish, and they had lusts. They wanted all kinds of things that you'll see momentarily. It was terrible. It was terrible. And what do they want? What does his Avu Tava mean? So the Mephoshim explained on the words his Avu Tava. Again, his Abu Tava. What do they want? What do they want? His Abu Tava. They, they weren't missing anything. Kol Tavos on the Shem Tava Bilvad. And the Torah didn't say what it was. It wasn't something specific. His Abu Tava, Los Abu Lashem Tava, below the Tzorach Yisor and Dova, meaning the Mepharshim and the Ramban, that they, they, wanted to, they wanted to be lustful, that everything they needed, they had the Mon, there's no problem. And the months satisfied them, their basic needs were satisfied, but it wasn't done in a fashion which enabled them to have these lusts satisfied in a lustful way. This is what happened. And how did it happen? How did Kalal Yisrael fall into this trap? Very simple. We were influenced by the society around us, by the Erev Rav. They were not really Jewish. Erev Rab. We had, they impacted us. They impacted us. And Rav Breuder writes in his parish in Ramban, we saw just this past, we read yesterday, Sota and Nazir, Haroa Sota Bikulkula Yazaratsa Benayayin. Just as seeing the Kilkul of Sota, which we see today all the time with the promiscuity in America, we have to separate ourselves from this kind of a lifestyle. Yazaratsa Benayayin. I don't recommend you be a Nazir nowadays. But separate yourself totally from the lifestyle of what's around you. As the Rambam says in Hilchas Deus Perik Baba Locha Aleph, a person is affected by his friends, his close circle. You have to get, make sure you have good friends. But also, the Rambam says, by the mid Anche Midinaso, the people in this country. That's the problem with this country, the United States of America. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the entire society is based upon Taiva. Whatever, whatever, if it feels good, just do it. And as Rashi comments, this is Pasuk Dalit, and Pasuk Hey, talk about the Dogo, the Kishurim, Avatichim, Tzolim, and the Shumim, and now we only have Mun. Only have Mun. Mun was very sweet. So the Bechor Shor is quoted here. It was very, it was too sweet. Achasor and the Kalas Tushen. It's too sweet. We have to cook it to get some of this sweetness out. I mean, it's just complaints. You can always complain. And he writes over here on the Pasuk Yud, after we read this whole description. Says Rashi, what does it mean? Al iske mishpachos, al arayos hanesaros lehem. That's what they're crying. It wasn't. Why are they crying now? Why are they crying now? It was a problem from before. Harsina, they already asked all the arayos. He says, well, in the olden days, they were not divided into, into 12 separate tribes and choice of marriage partners. Now they're, they're cramped in, less choice. That's what he says. I have a different interpretation. My interpretation is, I think, more compelling. The first five psukim tell us of their lusts for food. Want meat, even though we have mud, it's, it's too sweet. Always to complain. You can always complain. And once they established complaining for the physical pleasures of food, the next complaint was for the physical pleasures of Arias. The two go together. That's exactly why it's found here and not elsewhere. Unfortunately, we see this today, even in our society, society of Am Yisrael, 
and it was called Torah Mitzvah Observant Society. People have all kinds of lusts. And let's be honest, in the area of Arias as well, uh, Ramban writes Kedoshim to you. A person can be novel Torah with his own wife. There used to be many wives with one wife. You know, all kinds of novellas that are being you know, looking for this and looking for that. Is this mutter? Is that mutter? <laughs> Aside from the problematica and strict halacha, it indicates a lust for lust. A person has mon, he has he had what he needed. A person that's blessed with a spouse, a husband, a wife, normally you have what you need. No, they want this, they want this, they want that, they want that. It's, it's, it bespeaks a lust for lust's sake, which is exactly what we saw. His avu tava, which is something which is a terrible, terrible, terrible thing, leads to terrible results. And there are those who are not married, not husband and wife. They have their own tavas, which they lust for, which in the olden years, you know, you had, you had to be celibate. No, I want to do this, I want to do that. It's not the time to go into the various types of things that people are doing which are against the Torah, against the halacha, against the Jewish family values, even, even, a, even quote, Judeo-Christian ethic family values. And what does it cause? Because that's what's going on in the street. Anshe Medinasa. The people in the nation, the nation of the United States, have abandoned any semblance of what we used to call morality, family values, and it impacts on Kala Yisrael and even on Shomit Torah as well. We read in the next week's parsha. What does that mean? Don't stray after your eyes. Now the, the, the sun has come out. It's now today 90 degrees here in New York. To walk the streets, how to walk a little bit in the street on Friday on a hot day, you can't walk the streets. Shmira Seinayim is a, is a very important obligation. Watch what you, you know, you have to close your eyes. You have to not look at things you should not be be looking at. It's such an important thing to do. The summer is upon us. We have to be careful about it. And again, it's the the whole country is that way where nothing is nothing is covered, nothing is sacred, nothing is you know, it's, it rises to the point with Los Sasur Achrei Levavchem Chazal say. Rashi quoting Moshe Moshe Tabrachos Achrei Nechem is Nus Achrei Levavchem is Minus is heresy, is apocursus. In certain parts, unfortunately, in our own society, the fact that people are saying, and even people who are otherwise show me mitzvahs, that we cannot stop people from indulging with their particular lusts, whatever they happen to be, and they say that Khalila, the Torah has to change, or the Torah is wrong, Rahman al Islam, that is minus, which both comes from Znus and leads to Znus. The two go together. You look in Rashi, it's a contradiction. What comes first, the eyes or the heart? Not, no time to go into that right now. We have a combination of the, of the znus, which permeates the entire country, and yes, the minus. The fact that the Bible is no longer binding, or we have to change or reinterpret, that is minus, that is heresy. And both of these phenomena exist in the America at large, and it's crept in, unfortunately, to our society, even the Torah society as well. And it's our responsibility to keep ourselves away from the area of Rav. That was a mistake. The Erev Rav influenced them. That caused a terrible churban of Isabu Tava, which is the final blow. We survived the first two. We survived Benosim and Amachdem. We survived the Misodinim. But what destroyed us and changed the course of Jewish history was the Isabu Tava. Instead of going into Eretz Yisrael in three days, we, would, we took them 40 years, and it's, we're now in Golas for 2,000 years, all because of that, of that terrible mistake. And therefore, I end my Divrei Chizuk by saying, Chazak, Chazak, Minis Chazek. Three times Chizuk. We had dealt with three Peronius that exist now, the COVID Peronius, and the Miron Peronius, and the Hamas Peronius. But they had three Peronius then too. They had three. The Ramban enumerates them. Benosim and Amachna, they were running away from, from Har Sinai, which for us means running away from Shivas and from Shuls. They were happy to run away. Then they complained about what was missing in their lives, even though they had so much. And they were, what they were missing was also for their good. And finally, the lust for lust's sake, which unfortunately is the mantra 
of American society, which has impacted even the Torah society as well. So we too have those same three Puranios, which they had in the Midbar, as well as the three Puranios, which I was asked to speak about, the COVID, the Miron tragedy, and the war in Eretz Yisrael. What's therefore our job? To be mischazek, to give the mishtate v'tzorah shachavero. We should be mishameach them. We should be mishameach those who have suffered losses in any of these three, or in general losses. There's so many losses from COVID, we can't even enumerate them. There are financial losses and psychological losses and family losses. So many losses. We can do our best to help these people out, staying away from the spirit of the country, which is only involved in lust. And if we will overcome these three Puranios, and Mitz Hashem, the Kaddish Baruch Hu will quickly bring us the third base of Migdash, from Heir of Yamenu, Amen for Amen. Thank you for joining. Rabbi Willig, on behalf of the National Council of Young Israel and all those who are on this Zoom call, thank you so much for taking the time this morning to share with us these tremendous words of Chizuk, of an inspiring and very insightful message that I'm sure all of us will take with us and share with others as time goes forward. I also want to thank Benjamin Hammer, our Director of Rabbinic Services at National Council for organizing this call and arranging all the technical aspects, uh, which went off uh, without a hitch, of course, as usual. So once again, thank to all, thanks to all of you for participating, and we wish you a very good day. Call to.